Hello, nerds. We're gonna let that door freak out for a minute. Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom, movies edition. And we're gonna keep with this vlog and the news stuff while I uh, get stuff done around the house. This is, we don't see a lot of him. This is Jack. We don't see a lot of him because he's sick a lot. And that's why he has this suit, is because he itches his skin off. Oh, allergic to the world, and we're talking movies in this episode of Week in Nerddom, so let's hit up an intro real quick. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Auberginois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump in the news, let's hit in on the sponsor for the week. This week we're sponsored again by Mercari and by Poshmark. Uh, we are selling stuff on both Mercari and Poshmark. There's a lot of stuff up there. Pictures should be cycling on your screen right now. Uh, this is a necessary part of uh, living in this place that we are living. So we're trying to, to cull the the clothing issue <laughs> so check it out links in the description to both the Mercari and the Poshmark sites where we are selling all of our stuff and now let's jump into the news okay so first thing on the agenda for movies is faith uh, for those of you unfamiliar faith is a is super superhero from Valiant Comics um, who is, it's difficult to say it this way because it's Valiant and Valiant has less, has been guilty of this less, but they're still guilty of it. This, this superhero is part of their diversity agenda. This superhero is part of their, I don't know, I don't know how to break it down, but, uh, it's a, it, she's a fat nerdy girl who suddenly gains the ability to fly and then she also has some weird telekinetic ability that is somehow tied into her ability to fly um but the the point is and like anyone who's going to call me a misogynist for this go, I, I can't stop you i don't i'm not a misogynist but you can think what you will uh i can't imagine that there is a demand for a fat superhero it's, you break down the psychology of what a superhero is. A superhero is someone that we can idolize, someone that we can aspire to be. If the superhero is bland and everyday and mundane and all of these things, then why would we want to aspire to be something we effectively already are? Uh, I understand the desire to put a variety of characters in the front, and I understand the desire to expand your reader base, which is exactly what this character is. <laughs> but there's a better way to do it. And now this character, and, and it, they must be selling books, because they're selling enough books for Sony to think that there is reason to make her into a movie. So we're going to be seeing a Faith movie that's put out by Sony and I I don't th I foresee this going poorly for Sony. That's all I'm saying. Next on the list is uh Doctor Strange 2 and Doctor Strange so we've gotten word from Benedict Cumberbatch that he at first he said he was unsure and then he was thinking it wasn't going to happen. Well, Feige told Cinema Blend this last week that Doctor Strange 2 is going to happen. And not even just that, but it's already in production. They're already in pre-production for Doctor Strange 2. So, does that mean Cumberbatch isn't coming back to play Doctor Strange? 
Probably not. He's going to be back. And it was all just a ruse because they had to play vague so that we wouldn't know who dies in Infinity War. So Doctor Strange 2 is happening. Oh, so next... Next on our list is Spider-Man Homecoming, the sequel, which is officially titled Spider-Man Far From Home. So it sounds like, and, and actually Sony confirmed this last week, Tom Holland two weeks ago leaked it accidentally on purpose on his Instagram uh, when he was apologizing for being absent or something. Uh, so Holland leaked it. Last week, Sony confirmed it. It's going to be called far from home. So it sounds like at least part of our Reddit leak from a few weeks ago, or over a month ago now, uh, is going to come true. Far from home sounds like it's implying that they are in a different country, right? Far from home. At the very least, they're not in Manhattan. So there's that. Uh, I, yeah, get your passports ready because we're going to Europe, it sounds like. Next on the list, and this one has a quote, is from, uh, it's, it's about X-Force. Drew Goddard, the director, told Cinema Blend that once his current project is in theaters, which is uh, Bad Times at the El Royale, then they're going to go into production on the X-Force movie. And then in the same, inter or in a different interview, yeah, in a different interview with Slash Film, Backslash Film, uh, he said, and this is this is the quote that that is very interesting, and this is something that I feel like the writers over on the DC movies should take note. He said, I'm going to quote this exactly. They're talking about adding humor into the film. Let me get the dog out. Come on, come on, come on. Just walk. He said, the answer is, I don't worry about jokes. I just don't. I worry about the characters, the story, and trust that we'll make it funny. I did the show The Good Place, and I've been very lucky because I work with creator Mike Schur, and I know, oh, these are the funniest people on the planet. So when I do anything like that, I just worry about the character, the emotion, the story, and then I call them and go, make it funny now. With Ryan, that, it's the same thing. Ryan Reynolds is so funny, you don't stress about it. It's always easier to add jokes. It's impossible to add emotion. So you shouldn't go into it trying to shoo... You shouldn't go into it with, we're going to make this a funny movie. You should go into it make, saying, we're going to make this a good movie. And then, if it's a funny character, the writing does that for you. You don't have to shoehorn it in. I just thought that was something that we should note for our friends over at DC. Laundry. So, Next, we're talking about not an actual movie that's per likely to happen, at least not right now. Uh, Todd McFarlane was talking with comicbook.com and he postulated the idea that if Sony is the studio that puts out Spawn, then in the future, or not Spawn, yeah, no, I was right, Spawn. <laughs> Then, down the road, wouldn't it be interesting if we got a Spawn Venom crossover movie? This could be awesome. It's really just McFarlane thinking out loud. But, that brings us to a really interesting point. Are we so saturated with our comic book movies at this point that... that the... We're, we're to the point where we were in the 90s with comic books. 
where we get all sorts of crazy crossovers because in the 90s it was because they were trying to increase their readership they were trying to get as, as many people to read so if you were a fan of this thing and we could work out a deal with their publisher then we could put it in our book too and then both of us would theoretically make more money it didn't really work that well in the 90s however this isn't the 90s, and this is movies, not comic books. So this is a more widely accepted form of entertainment. Does that mean that we're entering into this era where we're going to get these crazy crossover movies, potentially? I mean, movie studios are much more selfish with their IPs than comic book studios are. But if that's the case, could we, be, could we potentially see them just try and scramble and grab up all the different IPs from different comic book publishers so they can put it out under them, their, their own stuff? Sony is probably the most likely because Disney owns Marvel fairly exclusively with you know a couple exceptions that we've talked about. And Sony has just the, two, the one now. The one, they only have the Spider-Verse. So th if they do put out Venom or Spawn rather, that would be a very, that's a very interesting possibility. Uh, what do you guys think? How do you feel the future of comic book movies is going to expand? We already know Spike, uh, Spike Lee is going to be doing a comic book movie. And we know that Sony, with some of their mi more minor comic book movies, is going to be playing with genre a little bit. So, I, I, I feel like comic books is going to become... It, uh, to movies what science fiction is to literature in that it's just a vehicle to tell a larger story it's not the focus anymore yeah science fiction you get crazy rocket ships and stuff like that but they don't focus on the rocket ships they focus on the story so we're getting to a point of saturation with comic book movies where we're not going to be focusing on the comic book elements. We're not going to be focusing on the superhero elements. We're going to be focusing on the character and the story and the plot. And that's potentially a fantastic thing, right? Then, and I'm sorry it's dark, we're in the basement where I do the laundry. Then, we're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And my laundry detergent is out, so I have to use the new stuff. James Gunn just posted to his Instagram, I believe. James Gunn, for those of you that don't know, is the director of the first two Guardians movies and part of the writing staff. Uh, I don't know that he was the exclusive writer for the first two movies, but it would seem he's the main writer for the third movie, and it's done. And for anyone who's thinking that this is going to take place before the events of Infinity War, he has explicitly said this is going to take place after the events of Infinity War. So... We know Star-Lord's gonna live, and we know Groot's gonna live, and we know Rocket's gonna live, and beyond that, perhaps Drax, maybe not Gamora, but really, with the Infinity Gauntlet, anything is possible, right? So, next on our list is The Predator. Now, there's a new trailer, link in the description. This new trailer, <laughs> looks I want to say it looks great because the idea and spoiler alert if you haven't watched it yet I'm gonna spoil the trailer but it's a freaking trailer so whatever a uh, potential movie spoiler I guess uh, I want to say it looks great because they're they're adding more to the predator mythos more than they're adding to the predator interacting with people mythos does that make sense so they're adding to who the Predator is. They're adding to the race. They're also giving us a new species of Predator, maybe? Uh, we don't know yet because the movie's not out and they're doing a moderately decent job with keeping at least that much information secret. So, I it, go watch the trailer. I really feel like two things are gonna happen with this movie. First, 
people who consider themselves fans, so the fanboys, as we have learned, they are often are not real, uh, really fanboys, more, more like they have a set idea of how a property should go, and when it doesn't go that way, they get pissed off. So the fanboys are going to get insanely mad at this movie. They're, it's, they're just gonna freak out. And this movie, is going to be popcorn fodder. This, which is what it's designed to be. This is supposed to be a mindless action flick with a really cool antagonist. And now we've got uh, layered antagonists. We have the predator, and then we have the large predator, it looks like, is going to be the antagonist to the antagonist, and also the antagonist to what we can kind of make out our protagonists. Though, I don't think we're going to spend a whole lot of time with the protagonist. I, I, um, I foresee this movie having a large issue with its story as far as it's concerned with the people, with the humans, with the what we should consider the protagonists. So, it, it looks like it's going to be great, but who knows. Another real quick thing, uh, Gargoyles. <laughs> Jordan Peele, yeah, Jordan Peele from Key and Peele, also from Get Out fame and stuff, uh, walked into the Disney offices apparently a couple weeks ago and said, I want to make a live action version of that 90s cartoon called The Gargoyles. Please let this happen. Please, Disney, let this come to fruition. We we're probably not gonna get that. Disney is more inclined, we're, so, if you've seen things that deal with the industry in movies at all, uh, or, or documentaries and stuff, where we're talking about stuff after the fact, uh, there was, a, there's always been movie executives who want to play it safe. That's kind of the name of the game. So, Playing it safe for a long time was, in the 80s, was these big action movies and you didn't get a whole lot of character stuff. In the 90s, we wanted more character stuff, but we also got a lot of really safe romantic comedies. And then we started moving past that and there was this really weird gray area where we were getting rated R comedies in the early aughts. And that moved into what we know of as the uh, superhero stage of modern cinema. And that's where we're at right now. So Disney owns the rights to Gargoyle. Disney also owns the rights to two other incredibly huge money-making properties. Star Wars, Marvel, anyone? So that means they're not gonna wanna make the Gargoyles into a movie. All accounts, they are dragging their feet with their request. Because, I mean, really, are they gonna say no to Jordan Peele? They're dragging their feet with this request because they only want to make these big surefire hits when it seems that they don't understand the following that the Gargoyles had. That was, at least in my anecdotal experience, that was probably one of the better, easily one of the better cartoons from the 90s, from my childhood. Uh, and I, I still watch it today. There's very few cartoons from my childhood, from my early adolescence and such that I still watch. One of the, I mean, it's Ninja Turtles, Batman, Ed, Ed and Eddie, kind of. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I just found a live stream on YouTube a couple of days ago that I can't stop watching. But yeah, so Ninja Turtles, Batman, uh, Ed, Ed and Eddie, obviously, like I just said, Gargoyles, and that's kind of, X-Men. That, that's about it, those five. I watched a lot of cartoons back in the day. Those five I have taken the time to hunt down and so that I actually have copies of them so that I can watch them whenever I want. And Mortal Kombat, but that doesn't count because it was really bad. The only reason I still watch it is because it's Mortal Kombat. So yeah, uh, I feel like, I don't know, maybe there's something we can do. Maybe start a hashtag, uh, 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 hashtag Gargoyles Revival. There you go, hashtag Gargoyles Revival. Let's see, let's see if we can make that happen because if, if we can make it known to Disney that they will make money on it, then they will let Jordan Peele make it. Unless they're just going to say yes and they have to work out logistics. I don't know what it is, but something's got to happen because this movie should happen as well. We're so. Okay. Speaking of Mortal Kombat, <laughs> 
Uh, so James Wan is the director on board to do the reboot movie for Mortal Kombat. He is currently working on another movie, which is... Let me consult the notes. Doodly doodly do. Aquaman. <laughs> That's dumb. He's currently working on Aquaman. Uh, so once Aquaman is in theaters, there are rumors saying that his production company is going to start moving forward with the Mortal Kombat movie. So does that mean we're in pre-production? IMDb has said Mortal Kombat movie's been in pre-production for the last like six years. So we can't take that for uh, our, 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 our information, I guess. But I, I'm excited. They're, they have scouted locations. It looks like their primary scouting location has been in Chicago. Which is funny because that's where the game originates. Uh, Ed Boon worked, uh, Ed Boon and company, John Tobias and such, worked at Midway Games, which was based in Chicago back in the day. Midway went under, they started NetherRealm, which was bought by Warner Brothers. So NetherRealm Studios is now located in California. But it started in Chicago, so it looks like the primary filming locations are going to be in Chicago, but they've also scouted locations in New Zealand and Australia as well. So I, I'm crossing fingers that we get something even kind of as good as that Legacy series that happened a few years back. But that, guys, is the end of movies this week. What did I miss? Go ahead and tell Russo in the comments, this little guy right here, this is my other dog. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper in the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can get all of the freebies, all of the links to the social medias and the stores, so you can go get your nerdy swag. Or you can support a little more directly over on Patreon, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. That is the place that you can, there's four tiers. Uh, the lowest tier is just a dollar a month. You really, really get a lot for that dollar. So go check it out, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like the episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, there is a button on the screen right now that you can click or tap that will take you to all of the other nerdy news. There's about a two week gap between this week and the last time we did this. So, I mean, things happen. I have to adult every now and then. So click that box, do the stuff. Before you do though, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. And that's how we vlog the news. <laughs>